Felix Salton's Bambi, A Life in the Woods. Chapter 1. He came into the world in the middle of a thicket, in one of those little hidden forest glades which seemed to be entirely open, but are really screened in on, on all sides. There was very little room in it, scarcely enough for him and his mother. He stood there, swaying unsteadily on his thin legs, and staring vaguely in front of him with clouded eyes which saw nothing. He hung his head, trembled a great deal, and was still completely stunned. What a beautiful child, cried the magpie. She had flown past, attracted by the deep groans of the mother in her labour. The magpie perched on a neighbouring branch. What a beautiful child, she kept repeating. Receiving no answer, she went on talkatively. How amazing to think that he should be able to guess up right and walk. How interesting. I've never seen the like of it in all my born days. Of course, I'm still young, only a year out of the nest, you might say. But I think it's wonderful, a child like that, hardly a minute in this world and beginning to walk already. I call that remarkable. Really, I find everything you dear do is remarkable. Can he run too? Of course, said the mother softly. But you must... Pardon me if I don't talk with you now. I have so much to do and I still feel a little faint. Oh, don't put yourself out on my account, said the magpie. I have very little time myself, but you don't see a sight like this every day. Think what a care and bother such things mean to us. Children can't stir once they're out of the eggs, but lie helpless in the nest and require an attention. An attention, I repeat, of, you, of which you simply can't have any comprehension of. What a labour it is to feed them, what a trouble it is to watch them. Just think for a moment what a strain it is to hunt for food for children and to have to be eternally on guard lest something happen to them. They're helpless if you're not with them, isn't that the truth? And how long it is before they can move, how long it is before they get their feathers and look like anything at all? Pardon? replied the mother. I wasn't listening. The magpie flew off. Stupid soul, she thought to herself. Very nice, but stupid. The mother scarcely noticed that she was gone. She continued zealously washing her newly born. She washed him with her tongue, fondling and caressing his body in a sort of warm massage. The slight thing staggered a little. Under the strokes of her tongue, which softly touched, which softly touched him here and there, he drew himself together and stood still. His little red coat, that was somewhat tussled, bore fine white spots and on his vague baby face there was a deep, sleepy expression. Round about grew hazel bushes, dogwoods, blackthorns and young elders. Tall maples, beeches and oaks wove a green roof over the thicket, and from the firm, dark brown earth sprang fern fronds, wood vetch and sage. Underneath, the leaves of the violets, which had already bloomed, and of the strawberries, which were just beginning, clung to the ground. Through the thick foliage, the early sunlight filtered in a golden web. The whole forest resounded with myriad voices, was penetrated by them in a joyous agitation. The wood thrush rejoiced incessantly, the doves cooed without stopping, the blackbirds whistled, finches warbled, the titmice chirped. Through the midst of these songs the jay flew, uttering its quarrelsome cry, the magpie mocked her, and the pheasants cackled loud and high. At times, the shrill exulting of a woodpecker rose above all other voices. The call of a falcon shrilled, light and piercing, over the treetops, and the hoarse crow chorus was heard continuously. The little thorn understood not one of the many songs and calls, not a word of the conversations. He did not even listen to them, nor did he heed any of the odours which blew through the woods. He heard only that soft licking against his coat that washed him and warmed him and kissed him and he smelled nothing but his mother's body near him. And she smelled good to him, and, snuggling closer to her, he hunted eagerly around and found nourishment for his life. While he suckled, the mother continued to caress her little one. Bambi, she whispered. Every little while she raised her head, and listening, snuffed the wind. And then she kissed her fawn again, reassured and happy. Bambi, she repeated. My little Bambi.